When I left atheism for faith, I couldn't understand why some sincere churches weren't answering the many questions I suddenly had. But then I learned a game-changing theory. Welcome to 5-Minute Spirituality, a look at how the great spiritual masters help you enjoy and thrive in your life right now. In our first three videos, we've looked at contemplative spirituality. But contemplative spirituality is actually an important part of something a bit larger. You might call it journeying spirituality. It's not conservative, it's not progressive, but somehow it can incorporate both and perhaps go a bit past them. I'll talk here about a fascinating theory of spiritual and emotional development that might give you a flavor for this journeying idea. This theory was pioneered by a once famous psychologist named M. Scott Peck. He wrote what I'm told is the best-selling book of the 1980s called The Road Less Traveled. And I think his stage theory has things to teach us about how religion connects with contemplative spirituality. Peck describes four stages of human spiritual and emotional development that he says will go together right up until the fourth stage begins in our early 20s, at which point all the rest is exploration of that final stage. But, he says, trauma gets in the way and keeps most of us from making smooth progress. And these stages might also help explain why we so often talk past each other about spiritual issues. So let me briefly run through them for you and you can see what you think. Let's call stage one chaotic. This corresponds to the toddler years. Toddlers are cute and loving, but in the broader sense, they can't care about you. As they're tantruming over a toy they've been denied, toddlers rarely stop themselves to say, but you know, I haven't once asked about your day. Peck observes that people who get stuck in the chaotic stage, sometimes called the criminal stage, are often best served by two institutions, jail and positions of power. In jail, we do know where we end, where the bars are. But high-functioning stage one people can often find themselves in positions of power where they fool people that they're not all about themselves. We might call stage two rules-based. This would correspond to being age six or seven. Now we care what mommy and daddy think, what they want, what the rules are. Peck argues that two institutions might best serve stage two. The military may be for obvious reasons. It famously helps people coming from chaotic stage one backgrounds become solid citizens. But he also says that churches and other houses of worship worldwide fit in here. They tell people the rules, what's right, what's wrong, who the good people and the bad people are. Now he doesn't judge this. The heart and soul of most countries is stage two. These are the good people that get most things done, that raise great families. It's largely a conservative space. It brings order out of the chaos of stage one. Let's call stage three skeptical. This corresponds to the teen years. At this stage, the healthy teen begins to question the rule she's been taught in stage two. So they might ask a stage two parent, so why am I not supposed to have sex with someone before I get married? If the answer they get back is, what are you, some kind of immoral person? They might be confirmed in stage three. There was really nothing behind all those stage two rules, evidently. It was all a power play. The institution that best supports stage three is the university. Periodically, conservative parents complain that universities are only liberal, but maybe that's true by definition. Universities are filled with 18 to 21 year olds. It's the sweet spot of stage three. This is usually a progressive space. What stage three people usually don't realize is that there is a stage four, that there actually are answers to the questions they've been asking. You might call this the mystical stage or the journeying space because now we're starting a profound, important, uncharted journey with Jesus. Here we suddenly realize that many things we were taught in stage two are in fact true, but in a richer and more mysterious way than we imagined. So take a spiritual truism from the biblical tradition. Believe in Jesus and be saved. Stage two might read that as, okay, as of today at 3 p.m., I did believe in Jesus, so I know I'm going to heaven, whatever happens. Stage four, on the other hand, might well say, Wow, that seems profound. I think I believe. But what does believe mean? Am I believing now? How do I keep doing it? And saved. Saved right now or just saved after I die? Wow, how does this work? You might say that stage four is about questions. Stage two is about answers. A key insight here is that you don't graduate from one stage to the next. You actually incorporate each stage as you move on. So in stage four, you're very aware of your conservative stage two side that believes in rules of good people and bad people. And you're aware of your progressive crusading stage three side. 
And you're comfortable having what Carl Jung would call a shadow side, that here you'd call a stage one side. And so if following spirituality to where it leads you appeals to you, the good news is that you don't need to reject others for not being where you are. You can bless all people and know that all people have their own things to teach you. What's helped me in the stages is understanding that I might need to take a kind of journey that not all of my acquaintances need to take. And it's helped me realize that with contemplative spirituality as a key tool, perhaps I have a lifetime of learning and growth ahead of me, which turns out to be motivating and encouraging to me. That's it for today's 5-Minute Spirituality. Thanks so much for being here. Next up is a look at a way to connect with God that I learned from a French monk and have talked to thousands of people. I kid you not. It's really great. And if you enjoy 5-Minute Spirituality, you might also enjoy a lively weekly podcast on these things called Journey On with Dave Smelser. And I also host a vibrant online group on this stuff each week with people from all over. To learn more, shoot us an email. See you soon.